أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمدك اللهم يا من نور قلوبنا بأنوار المحبة العلوية وأكمل لنا ديننا بالولاية المرتضوية وأتم نعمته علينا بالهداية الحيدرية ونصلي ونسلم على الخاتم لما سبق والفاتح لمن خلاق والمعلن الحق بالحق والدافع جيشات الأباطيل والدامغ سولات الأضاليل حبيبك وحبيبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين ولا سيما النور على النور في طخياء الديجور والإمام المنصور والسراج المسور مهدي هذه الأمة وخاتم الأئمة إمام زماننا الحجة بن الحسن العسكري عجل الله عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله على أعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن شدم دلتنك ديجار زين جدائي ندارت زندگی بی تو صفائی یبن الحسن غم هجرت مرا بی چار کرده هوای دیدن روی تو در عمر مرا در کوچه ها آوار کرده To pray for the hastening of the reappearance of our beloved Imam let us recite three loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Dear scholars, respected elders, dear younger ones, brothers and sisters in Islam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in some special holy nights in the holy month of Ramadan, the holy month of the Quran, the month whereby one verse recitation of the holy Quran in this month is equivalent to reciting the whole of the Qur'an in any other 
month. The month whereby we are recommended to recite, read, understand and appreciate the true values of the Holy Quran. And especially in these nights, the nights of Qadr, the night which is equivalent to a thousand months of ibadah and worship, the month whereby the Holy Quran was revealed upon our Holy Prophet, this night, these nights, and this in this month, we need to understand the value of the Holy Quran. It's important not just to read the Quran, but to be of those who take the valuable words of Imam Rulla who states, do not disregard the words of the Quran. And do not be of those who disregard the words of the Quran, for they are surely of those who are dhalim. They are those who are surely astray from the path. Because of what? Because they disabandoned. They disconnected. They abandoned. And they stayed far apart from the Quran. The Quran is one of those jewels that shall complain on the day of judgment. That I was amongst the people, but they abandoned me. And they allowed ghubar and dust to set on me on their shelves. Never to read it, never to recite it. And some of us, we think that Quran is to be read only in the month of Ramadan. Eh? Quran is a walking guide and advice. And every day in our lives, we should open, read, recite and understand and appreciate the teachings of the Quran and practice those teachings in our lives today. When we look at a topical review of the words, of the topics and subjects that have been mentioned in the Quran, one of the topics that has been mentioned on numerous occasions in the Holy Quran is the word Salah. When we look at, for example, the, the longest surah in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, the word Salah is mentioned. When we look at the shortest surah in the Holy Quran, Surah al kawtha for example, فَصَلِّي لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ The word Salah or its connotation is mentioned in the shortest surah. You notice, for example, on 90 different occasions, the 90 verses mention the importance of Salah. Salah has been highlighted. And today, what is Salah? Salah is the act of worship bringing us closer on a platform closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this act of worship why is it called salah why لِأَنَّهَا صِلَةً بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَخَالِقِهِ why is this act that we perform that prayer that we perform called salah because it's a connection a link between the created between the servant and his creator and his lord it's a connection. It's a station that we greet and meet our Lord and we discuss and speak towards our Lord. When you look at the Holy Quran, not only it mentions the importance of Salah, but there are different understandings of the word Salah. For example, there is a moment where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Allah, wa malaikatahu yusallun. Verily, Allah and His angels, they send Salah on the Holy Prophet. And here it does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays on the Holy Prophet. Rather, salah in this verse means the importance of the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Holy Prophet. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Oh you who believe, also you send your blessings and mercy upon the Holy Prophet. وَسَلِّمُوا تَسِّيمًا And send your peace and greetings upon the Holy Prophet. Salawat. The first wajib obligation upon every Muslim being which was ordained before Siyam, before fasting, was Salah. The first act of worship we learn when we become Muslims or when we have the responsibility of performing the wajib acts is Salah. The first thing that shall be questioned and accounted for on our hisab, on our accountability is Salah. فَإِنْ قُبِلَ قُبِلَ مَا سَوَاهَا وَإِنْ رُدَّ رُدَّ مَا سَوَاهَا If your Salah is accepted, every other action is 
accepted, if your salah is rejected, everything else is abandoned. First thing is salah. Hence you noticed not only the first thing that was highlighted and placed an important aspect towards for every single one of us was salah. But you notice when you look at the lives of the Ahlul Bayt, their very last message to their companions, to their followers, to the believers, to those who surrounded them was the importance of salah. For example, our Holy Prophet, the last messages that he would give, the last words that he would give, he would say, As-salah, as-salah, laysa minna man istakhaffa bis-salah. One is not from us, one is not amongst us, the one who takes their salah lightly. لَنْ يَنَالُوا شَفَاعَتَنَا مَنْ اسْتَخَفَّ بِالصَّلَاةِ One who takes their salah lightly, they will not have the shafa'ah of the Ahlul Bayt. They will not have the intercession of the Ahlul Bayt. You notice further in the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen in his will, Allah, Allah, fi salah فَإِنَّهَا عَمُودُ دِينِكُمْ Fear Allah, fear Allah, remember Allah, remember Allah in matters in regards to your salah. For salah is the pillar of your religion, amudu deen, pillar. You notice further the importance of salah is mentioned not only perform salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, establish salah, aqim salah. There's a difference between performing salah then establishing salah, iqamatu salah. What's iqama? What's performing and establishing salah? Establishing salah is when you set a firm basis in your life, a firm basis in your lifestyle, that you have a firm station, and that firm permanent station must be salah. Hence, when one asks you, why do we pray? Why? Open the Holy Quran, you notice the answer is there in three words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Aqimi salata. Why? Lidhikri. Establish prayers. Why? In order to establish the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think and imagine if today this salah was not ordained wajib upon me. How many of us would have gone down into sajda and said, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamd? How many of us would have gone to prostration and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us would have recited the surah from the Holy Quran if there was no salah today? How many of us, if we did not have salah as an establishment in our lives, how many of us would have remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Establish salah why? Innama furidatis salah The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states Innama furidatis salah Why? Li'iqamat dhikrallah In order to establish Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The only moment That you shun everything away You abandon everything Disconnect yourself from everything in this world and meet and greet and speak and discuss and convey everything in yourself towards your Lord is in salah. Hence you notice that every single of the prophets, every single one of the Ahlul Bayt, they would highlight the most important part of their life was salah. You notice the Quran mentions the importance of the establishment of salah. For example, Prophet Ibrahim, he would raise his hands in dua and he would say, Rabbij alni muqeem as salah. Oh Allah, oh my Lord, allow me to be the, of the ones who have iqamat as salah, who establish salah, not only me. Rabbij alni muqeem as salah wa min dhriyati. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that also my family, my children, my progeny, they also establish salah in their lifestyle. Prophet Ismail, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in his life, كَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ 
bis-sala. Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to advise and command and recommend and remind his family the importance of salah. Luqman alayhi salam, Hakim, the wise Luqman, in the words of conversations that he used to have with his son, he would say, Ya Bunay, aqim salah. Oh, beloved dear son, establish salah. And this is a very important point that we need to remind one another. Brothers and sisters, parents and young ones, when you wish to inform others to pray salah, inform them in the best of akhlaq, the best of ways of how to speak. Luqman alayhi salam, he speaks to his son, Ya Bunay, O beloved son, O dear son, establish salah. Sometimes we notice that some people, when they wish to converse with someone, to bring them to a salah, they make it as the most disgusting thing in their life. If you don't pray, you won't be able to play. If you don't pray, you won't be able to go to school. If you don't pray, you'll go out. If you don't, you're making them have that dislike to a salah. Instead of informing them, if you pray, you establish the greatest remembrance of Allah. If you pray, abwabul jinan maftuha. If you pray, the gates of paradise are open upon you. If you pray, you are performing what the prophets of Allah performed, what the Ahlul Bayt performed, giving them the positive, the true understanding so that the sons and daughters, the children and others, they love salah and they approach and come near towards salah. Not because you've told them the importance of salah, but because they love the understanding that this station is bringing me closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Establish salah in order to establish the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man came to the sixth imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, and he informed the sixth imam that he wishes to go on a journey to travel. And he said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I'm still undecided. Shall I go on this safar, on this journey or not? Imam said, I advise you not to go. He said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, can you do for me an istikhara? Istikhara, whether I should go or not. The istikhara turned out to be bad. Imam said, I advise you not to go on this journey. The man, he did not adhere to the teachings, to the words of the sixth Imam, and he went on that business journey, that travel. He went for a few days, and then he returned, happy, smiling. The Imam saw him. Imam said, how are you, how's your journey? He said, Alhamdulillah, everything went well. Imam said, everything went well? He said, yeah, Alhamdulillah, everything went well, in contrast to your istikhara that came bad. Imam said, I'll tell you what happened to you. He said, the night that you arrived to that city, you were with your friends. You stayed in your friend's house. You had a lot of meal, you had food. Then you went to sleep. When you went to sleep, you missed the most important meeting in your lifetime. He said, which meeting? I went to all my business meetings. Imam said, you did not wake up for Salatul Fajr. You did not pray Salatul Fajr. And what you missed on that meeting in that fajr, you'll never be able to replace the benefits and the thawab of that one fajr salah that you missed. That one fajr salah that you missed. Hence, you notice when the imma and the ahlul bayt, when it would come towards the time of salah, the station of salah, they would abandon everything everyone else and say that I have the most important meeting to go to at the time of the establishment of salah at the time of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's the most important thing for me to know number one if I wish to maximize my understanding my prayer time my prayer meeting 
I need to be aware the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hafidhu ala salawa Take care and be aware of the importance of salah timings MashaAllah in the month of Ramadan everyone has memorized the time of salah not because of the time of salah but because of time of iftar Inshallah, this tradition continues or this remembrance continues in the months after Shah Ramadan that we remember the time of Salah, that when it comes towards the time of Salah, we abandon everything else and we say, now is the time that I must go and pray. If any one of us has a meeting tomorrow at 11 o'clock, 11 in the morning, how many of us would go to that important meeting, important interview at 3 p.m.? There's no point. There's no benefit going at 3 p.m. Or if someone was to say, if you come at 11 a.m., the meeting, at the meeting, you would receive a reward of 1,000 pounds. But if you arrive at 5 p.m., you would receive only 10 pounds. How many of us would go at 11 a.m.? We'd rush. We'd stand outside at 10.30 because we know the reward is greatest there. The reward greatest for salah is at the time of fadilah. At the time of Fadila, hence Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, one who takes precautions and is aware of the salam time and starts his prayer at the time of salah, kana lahu nuran wa burhanan wa najatan min al-nar yawm al That salah that you performed at the time, at the precious time, at the Fadila, the prescribed time, it shall be a light for you, a beacon for you, a safety, a guarantor for you against Nara Jahannam for you to cross towards Jannah. They asked the people of Jahannam, Ma salakakum fi sabar? What's brought you to Nar Jahannam? Not only towards Nar Jahannam, towards the lowest pits of Nar Jahannam, the lowest burning pits of Nar Jahannam. What did they reply? They were Muslims. What did they reply? What's brought me here is that we were of those Muslims, those believers who did not used to pray. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Woe be upon those who pray. Woe be upon those who pray. Continue the verse. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ So, those who are heedless in their prayers. Have you seen those people who are heedless in their medication timings? Medication timings, it says on their prescription, on their medication, that you have to take this medication three times a day. One with the morning meal, one with the lunch meal, and one with the evening meal. If you take all three medication at the same time, it's bad for your health. If you take all three medication at different times, very far apart, it's also bad for your health. The medication would only be of true benefit for you, benefit for you if you take it at the prescribed time that the doctor has prescribed for you. Hence they say, they came to one of the ulama, they said that I pray a lot, I perform salah, but when I pray, it's as if my salah has not been accepted. I pray for certain things, and I notice that some of my salah is not being accepted. He said, do you know why? He said, I'll give you an example. That sheikh, that alim, he took out his medication, and he had a capsule. He said, do you see this capsule? What's made of? He said, two caps. Is this beneficial for you? He said, yes. If I'm ill and if I take this medication, this capsule will help me because it's got active ingredients, medicine inside it. The sheikh, the alim, he removed the caps, the two caps. He poured out the medicine. He closed the two caps, the capsules together. He said, how about if I give you this capsule now? Would it benefit you? He said, no. Why would it not benefit you? He said, because it does not have the medicine inside it. He said, in the same way, some of us pray salah, pray salah, perform salah, but it has no active ingredient in it. 
no substance in it. Hence, that salah is like a bounce check. It goes up to the sky, they notice there's nothing of value in this person's life. Throw back that salah down. Bounce check. Have you seen bounce check? When you write a check for someone, one million pounds, you feel happy with yourself. It goes to the bank. They say, this guy has no one million pounds in his account. Return it. And they charge you for it. The same way. Some of us, uh, salah is like a bounce check. With no meaning, with no substance in it. Hafidhu ala salawat. Take precautions, precautions, precautions at the time of salah. Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, not only used to pray salah at the time of salah, but he loved salah. Kana ya'shiqu salah. He yearned and he anticipated the moment of salah. Ibn Abbas narrates that we were in the middle of the battlefield, Sufim, swords this way, arrows this way, and we would look at Amir al Mu'mineen. He was busy and occupied. What's he busy and occupied in doing? He would look at the sky. What's Amir al Mu'mineen doing at this busy moment of, of the battlefield of Safin? We asked, Ya Ali, what are you doing? What are you occupying yourself with? He said, I am looking for the time of Zawal al Shams, for the time of Salat al Dhuhr. They said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, we are in the middle of the battlefield. Some of us, when it comes to the time of Salah, your mother, father tells you, I'm in the middle of the PlayStation. I'm in the middle of this message. I'm in the middle of this. I'm in the middle of the TV series. Abandon it all. Listen what Amir al Mu'mineen says. لِأَجْلِ ذَلِكْ نُقَاتِلُهُمْ لِأَجْلِ الصَّلَاةِ we are here in the battlefield. Why? In order to establish salah. Abandoned everything. Time and place. Salah. Prayer. Amir al Mu'mineen, when it used to come towards salah, towards ibadah, he was known to pray salah. Not the 17 rak'ah that we pray wajib salah. No. Amir al Mu'mineen was even greater. He used to pray 1,000 rak'ah of salah daily. Some of us struggle to perform 1,000 yearly. Amir al Mu'min daily used to place eight hours, a third of his day, for ibadatullah, for worshipping Allah, for praying salah, for gaining true nearness in the station of salah. Amir al Mu'mineen used to say these words. He would say, Two rak'ah of salah in the masjid is more valuable and more beloved to Ali ibn Abi Talib than residing in Jannah. He used to say, Ilahi, my Lord, why am I worshipping you? Why am I gaining this true servitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why am I praying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? مَا عَبَدْتُكَ خَوْفًا مِنْ نَارِكَ وَمَا عَبَدْتُكَ طَمَعًا لِجَنَّتِكَ وَلَكِنْ عَبَدْتُكَ لِأَنَّكَ أَهْلٌ لِذَلِكَ Why have I worshipped you, Amir al -Muni? Why does Imam worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, I'm not worshipping you in order to gain the greed of heaven to enter Jannah. And I'm not worshipping you in order to stay away from fire from Jahannam. So why is Amir al worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَكِنْ عَبَدْتُكَ لِأَنَّكَ أَهْلٌ لِذَلِكَ Why am I worshipping you? For you, Allah, truly deserve worship. I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amir al Mu'mineen, his life was the embodiment of salah. He yearned for the moment of salah. When he was struck in an arrow, they said the best moment to remove that painful arrow in the leg of Amir al Mu'mineen would be in the time of salah because Amir al Mu'mineen, when he's in the station and the platform of salah, he abandons himself from this world 
and he's in full connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence he himself would say, Allah, Allah, for salah, hafidhu ala salawat. Take precautions at the moment of salah. وَلَا يَشْغَلَنَّكُمْ أُمُورَ الدُّنْيَا Do not allow the world, the affairs make you busy and occupied at the time of salah. Do not be of those فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُمْ Don't be of those who are careless, heedless, in their prayers, woe be upon them. Amir al Mu'mineen, he knew that when he was struck on the head by the poisonous sword of, the, of Ibn Muljam, that was true victory that he has gained the nearness of his Lord. When? Fuztu wa Rabbil Ka'bah. When? When I am praying towards the Lord of the Ka'bah. When I am on the embodiment of prayer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is my victory. This is my victory. And salah, as we all know, there is the wajib prayer, the daily prayers, which is wajib upon us. There is the wajib prayer in tawaf of Mecca. There is the wajib prayers, for example, when one passes away, he has a funeral ceremony. There is the wajib Ihtiyat wajib, wajib upon one person at the very least to perform salatul mayyit on the deceased janazah. When a person who's so dear towards us, so beloved towards us, a great scholar, a great alim, a great man known for his nobility, for his characteristics, we call everyone and tell them, by the way, there is Salatul Mayyit, Salatul Janazah for this particular alim, for this respectable man. So that everyone gathers and joins to bid their farewell towards that man, towards that person. But how many were there today for the Salatul Mayyit of Amir al Mu'mini? How many were there? Hundreds, thousands, millions. Only a handful were there for Salatul Mayyit of Amir. A handful. A man who was the greatest man after Rasulullah, who was a habbul khalaiq in Allah. A few were there for his Salatul Mayyit. And as they were raising his coffin, his janazah, Imam Hassan was carrying from this side, Imam Hussein from this side, and in the front, do you know who was carrying the janazah? No human being was carrying the janazah. The janazah at the front was carried by specific creatures of Allah, Malaikatullah, unknown creatures that we know, unknown human beings. It was being carried and it was leading these janazah, the janazah to an unknown place. Imam Hassan towards one side, Imam Hussein towards one other side. Inna lillah. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ وَعَلِيَّهِ وَإِمَامَا One would call from one side, another would call from another side until the janazah itself would lead towards the city of Najaf as it's known today. They would notice that there was a, a, a dug grave, a dig, it was digged and it was opened up full of noor. Who has prepared this grave? It has mentioned on it. This grave has prepared by Nabiullah Nuh. For who? For Ali ibn Abi Talib. For a man known as Ali ibn Abi Talib. They bury their father. 
Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, where should they go? They need to return and go back home towards Kufa. Brothers and sisters, remember, if you bury your own father and now you have to return home, all you wish to see in that home is your beloved father. But before they arrive to the city of Kufa, Imam Hassan notices that there is a hut and there's a man crying out loud, Wa Sayyida! Wa Sayyida! They rush towards that hut. Oh elderly man, oh Sheikh, how can we help you? They notice that man is blind. He can't see. He's, they, he says to them, there was a man. Every single day he would come to this hut. He would feed me. He would clothe me. He would take care of me. He would provide for me. Everything I needed, he would ask for. And he would provide me for. Everything I would ask him, he would provide me. Where is he? I'm concerned about him. Imam Hassan says, give us more about him. He would say more about the wonderful Amir al muminim They would say, oh man, we have just returned from the burial of our father. That was the Khalifa of the time, Amir al muminin That man starts to beat his head. He would say, Wa Sayyida, Wa Imama, Wa Aliya. But this is the Imams, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. They've just returned from the funeral of their father. They've performed the janaza, the janaza of their father. They buried it. La yom kayom kaya Abu Abdullah. Allah. Imam Ali had the funeral rites performed for him. He had the prayer rites performed for him. Imam Hussein, he would be alone in the sands of Karbala. He would call out, Imam Fikum Muslim. Is there not one Muslim amongst you? Laylatul Jum'a, Laylatul Ziyara. Inshallah, this gathering in Karbala soon. He would call out, Is there not one Muslim amongst you? I am the grandson of Rasulullah. They would strike him. They would attack him. He would say, Lima taqtulunani. Why are you killing me? They would say, Bughdan li'abika Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why are we killing you? Out of hatred for your father Ali ibn Abi Talib. They would strike him from one side, strike him from another side until Sayyid Zainab. Zainab. She would call out, Yawmun ala sadr al-Mustafa, wa yawmun ala wajh al-thara, hada hakada qala al-Mustafa, hakada qala al-Murtada. One day I see Hussein being embraced by Rasulullah. Rasulullah would hug him. Rasulullah would kiss him. Rasulullah would love him. Now I see Imam Hussein. He would be rushing towards him. Who would be rushing towards him? Shimr ibn al would be rushing towards Imam Hussein. He would be embraced by the souls of Banu Umayya. This is Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of Rasulullah. Inna Allah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon wa sayyalamu al-ladheena ghalamu Ayyamun qalabin yanqalibun wal aqibatu al-taqa Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من أعواني وأنصاري والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في العين وصحة في الجسم وبركة في الرزق وطولا في العمر بطاعتك وراحة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت ونجاة من النار 
ودخولا في الجنة وعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم ارزقنا زيارة الحسين وفي الآخرة شفاعة الحسين اللهم العن قتلة أمير المؤمنين اللهم العن قتلة أمير المؤمنين اللهم العن قتلة أمير المؤمنين اللهم اجعل محيانا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتنا ممات محمد وآل محمد إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات فردس وأبود مرحومين فأول خدام أبا عبد الله الحسين Let us recite Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha, but before it, allow Salawat. Allah.